financial markets. I am busy at Debayo. It's been a week of mixed activities across the markets, equity and the fixed income space. At the stock markets, the bulls withdrew to their shells as the bears resumed dominance after an eighth week of inactions. The profit-taking activity that dominated three out of the five trading sessions of the week coincided with the earnings season, a trend that we will be dis or digging into with an associate and gifted analyst, Desmond Abbey, who will also help us to understand some of the tier one and mid-tier banks results for the third quarter of the year. You're welcome to the program. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for having me. All right. Now, before we go straight to the bank results, let me get your reaction to the just uh, released Q3 GDP data, of course, showing a contraction, a 3.62% uh, contraction. Okay. Uh, posting a two consecutive um, decline in GDP, that shows that Nigeria is currently in a recession. However, if we look at the bottom line, we can see that it was a better performance than that of Q2. And really, it was expected because, I mean, we still have a little bit of um, um, residual of the impact of the pandemic and uh, the restriction of movement and of, uh, on business activity. So uh, it, 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 it wasn't the best, but it, it, it was an expected performance. And if you look um, at the sector, sectorial performance, we could see uh, manufacturing be uh, beginning to pick up as activities are beginning to open up. Uh, you know, telecommunications was also fair as um, a lot of companies began to adopt the work from home. Uh, so the, 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 the telecommunication sector saw a little bit of um, growth. So generally, uh, it, was, it, was, it was a bad performance, but compared to, it was expected. So compared to the Q2 performance, it was, it was fair. And um, the impact on uh, the stock market, on the, on the market, probably, uh, because w what is currently driving the market is not just the fundamentals, mm. it is um, excess liquidity, all right? So uh, there's so much liquidity in the, in the market that investors are looking for where to put funds. So it's not really about um, GDP, even though uh, the, the, the bulk of the people who depend on these parameters are foreign investors. And if we even take a good look at the foreign portfolio investment of uh, the stock exchange, we can see that f recently for the past few months, we've been having more of domestic investors than foreign investors. That just shows that um, domestic investors are really striving for um, interest, uh, interest earning assets because of um, the low fixed income space. So that's why um, the domestic investors are really uh, becoming the dominant players in the market. So the GDP may not really have so much impact on the market as um, investors are still searching for opportunities. All right, now let's uh, get into the trading week. Of course, what are your observations of the equities market trading week? Do we attribute the loss that we've seen to profit taking alone, or is there anything else that has fueled this? Well, like I said, uh, it's not fundamentally driven. So even the rally is not sustainable per se. However, it, it, it can be attributable to uh, profit taking. So even going forward, what would be seen in the equity market would be something like um, a back, a, a investors rushing for assets and then taking profit. So it would just be a, a rally and decline, rally and decline because there's no um, strong fundamentals to um, hold that, um, that, that rally. So that's, that's just it. All right, now let's delve into the bank earnings. Now, starting with GT Bank, of course, the figures actually look decent and positive, top down in the three-month period. But looking at the cumulative nine-month figures, there's a 3.2% decline in profit, and the earnings per share is down 3.28%. How do you square all of that up? Okay, uh, GT Bank uh, saw a decline in their interest income. And uh, I personally think that was a fair performance because of um, the whole um, um, headwinds that the economy saw. But um, what, what the bank has done is um, to try to manage their interest expense and their operating expenses in general to you know, combat the low um, interest um, yield. Uh, also, what, 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 what GT Bank has done is to invest a lot in financial instruments. So they are diving into um, financial instruments to see and find a way to uh, combat, to compensate for the low um, interest income. Now, policy-wise, the bank is aspiring to uh, have a hold coast status. How will that shape the company's performance in 2021? Uh, a hold coast uh, structure is it's, it's to, to really boost um, com confidence of investors in the company. 
uh, Guarantee Trust Bank already has the confidence of a lot of investors. So that would uh, be a good opportunity for them to um, expand their scope and also to post them better um, profit. So um, going forward, it, it should be a very good um, signal to investors. Now, let's talk about UBA. Of course, uh, what do you think informed the standalone profit in Q3? That's to the tune of 32 billion naira versus uh, 24 billion naira in the base year. But all of that appeared as a 5.5% fall in bottom line in the nine months data. Okay, uh, UBA uh, saw a decent um, interest income. And um, what, what they are trying to do is to manage their impairment charges to ensure that uh, they, they, they manage their um, deficit in loans. So uh, when they give their loan structure, so when they give out loans to manage bad debt in loans. So that's their uh, strategy to, to keep up with the um, whole situation. All right. Well, what are the chances uh, for recovery for the bank in the fourth quarter, considering the, the lower earnings per share that we saw? Okay, for the banks, uh, I think some of the things they should begin to focus on is, like I mentioned, number one, their operating expenses. So they should begin to cut down to manage their operating expenses because the interest income, if you can see, most of the banks posted a lower interest income. So if they can find a way to manage their operating expenses to, to uh, complement the low interest income, that would be fantastic for them. And if they can also try as much as possible to um, work on their uh, impairment to make sure that... Um, they work on their loan structure and all of that. So that, that's what they should be looking at. And let's talk about another big bank now, talking about FBN Holdings. Uh, I'm sure you've seen the results. What do you make of it? Our first bank also similar thing to uh, Guarantee Trust Bank. Uh, so the, their interest income, the, if you look at the percentage of um, decline, it was um, uh, better than um, that of the, uh, their interest expense rather, it was better than that of the interest income. So I think mo what most of the banks are doing is uh, trying to manage the, the, the ratio, the interest income to the interest expense. And um, what, what we could begin to see from now on with um, companies like um, First Bank and other banks is that um, they may begin to uh, focus more on financial instruments. So a bank may decide, okay, uh, the loan to deposit ratio, okay, what, what will be my charge even if I am going to be levied for not meeting that um, requirement? Is it going to be um, lesser than um, um, than the, the, uh, our debtors not being able to pay up their loans. So they be, we begin to consider these things and, you know, banks are very, very uh, uh, conscious about um, their loan, loan book at this point in time because of the um, interest income. Now, what do you make about the nine months results of Zenith Bank as well? Okay, Zenith Bank, uh, Zenith Bank also did well. Their interest income was uh, fair as well. And um, they are also trying to uh, manage their, their OPEX, and we can also see that the uh, impairment charges also was fair. So uh, overall, Zenith Bank um, was also a very good performance. All right, and what do you see in terms of the future holding for this bank? Okay, uh, similar to the uh, to Guarantee Trust Bank, Zenith Bank, would uh, the holding structure would boost investor confidence in the market. And Zenith Bank has already been performing very well in the stock market. So he... he, he a transaction, an event like this would really, really um, um, be able to hold the fundamentals of the company to ensure that you know, this, the, the, the stock of the company perf performs very well. Now, let's talk about Sterling Bank's earnings now. It doesn't look like a good time for that bank. So can you talk us through the bank's financial in details? Okay. Uh, Sterling Bank, uh, what, what they are going through is as a result of... Um, uh, the deposit, so they, they need to focus more on their retailing business uh, so, as, uh, so as to uh, be able to uh, meet, meet up with other investments. So they need to, divert, uh, to focus a lot on their retail, um, retail market so that you know, when they get more deposits from customers, they can um, um, look at um, a higher interest income and also look at um, investing in um, financial instruments as well. So their retail um, um, a market is, is not so strong at the moment. So I think that's one of the things that's affecting the bank. But what do you think could be responsible for this? Um, basically, at this point in time, it's, um, um, in, in, uh, would I say investor confidence as well as um, customer confidence? Um, generally, if we even look at the, the bank's um, performance, that's in their, um, their deposits at a point, even in Q2, 
we could see that um, a lot of a lot of people began to prefer holding cash. But you, you know, when the lockdown ended, we saw a higher um, cash deposit in this bank. So it, it's it's a general thing, and I just think that Sterling Bank is just struggling a little bit with, with it. So I believe they just need to increase their efforts in their retail markets, and they will do fine. All right. So generally now, how would you say that the low yield environment in the debt market uh, affected the earnings of all of these banks that we've talked about? OK, so the low income uh, field and even looking at the um, NPR rate. So that has um, affected the savings rate of most of these banks and has also affected their interest income. So the, the we, we are expecting uh, probably a hold or whatever decision the MPC makes. So this has already affected the, the bank. So like I said, these banks are trying to find a way to complement for this um, shortage in interest income. So they are looking at um, financial instruments and other um, sources of, of fund for the, for the banks. Now let's talk more about the MPC. Now, of course, we know that the meeting holds next week. What do you expect? Do you expect any more surprises just like we had the last time? Okay, uh, I, I even think that um, that's one of the reasons why the GDP was released today, so that um, the MPC could um, deliberate on it and include it in their analysis. So um, generally, we, would, we should expect a hold because looking at um, the, the, the MPC, the, 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 their decision on the last time, we could see that um, it affected the Q3 performance. So I believe the MPC would say, okay, fine, you know, there's a little bit of um, in progress. So they could decide to hold on all parameters or they could even decide to go um, a, for a 50 basis point um, cut. But when you look at the decision of the last time between then and now, would you say that any significant progress has been made owing to the last decisions made by the MPC? Yes, definitely. Uh, we could even see in the GDP um, report that um, the, even though there was a contrast, but it was a better performance in quarter on quarter. So from 6.01 to 3.62. So I believe it's a, it's a fair performance. So yeah, there's improvement from the decision. Well, let's touch more a bit again uh, on the GDP, of course. Going forward now in Q4, remember that the NSAS protest was at the beginning of the fourth quarter. So what are your expectations for the, the fourth quarter? Do you see Nigeria plunging further into the recession? Okay, uh, it, it depends. It depends on, on how the government is able to handle um, the situation. But um, businesses, activities are opening up and um, the economy is um, getting back to, 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 to normal. It's just for government to look at the policies at this point in time and for companies to try as much as possible to uh, adapt to certain changes in the economy and even in the, the mode of um, operation. So technically, uh, we, we could see a, the GDP posting uh, probably very close to zero or a positive, but uh, it, it, it should be better off than in the third quarter. And uh, just before I let you go, how do you expect the markets to react next week to the GDP data, talking about the fixed income and the equities markets? Okay. Uh, like I said, uh, the, the stock market is not really responding to fundamentals because investors are just looking for where to put money and to, 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 to get um, better interest because of the low fixed income space. However, uh, we could see a little bit of um, uh, take profit, which we saw last week. We could still see because a lot of stocks are trading at their 52 weeks high. So we could see a, a few stocks um, struggling next week. But over, overall, I believe it should be a mixed performance, probably a two days posting positive and three days posting negative. Now, so just as we begin to wrap up our conversation, what's your outlook for the banks this year? Looking at the fact that the NPL ratio shoots higher in the midst of high exchange rate and a looming devaluation as well as the accelerating headline inflation. Okay. Uh, first of all, the, the banking sector is such a very crucial uh, sector. And so the CBN, I believe the CBN is already considering this because in a time like this where we have um, a recession, and such an economic downturn, we, we, we have to protect the banking sector because any problem that starts from there would spread to the remaining um, mm -hmm. sector of the economy. So I believe the CBN is already taking that into consideration and we could see that in the policies that begin to um, come forth um, um, from, from time to time from now. However, uh, the performance of the bank even um, in the past nine months was, was fair. I mean, the banks were able to manage the crisis and were able to manage their performance and they are, they are making a lot of effort. So uh, subsequently, we, like I said, we'll, begin, we'll still see more of an um, impact on their interest income. 
but um, the, they may begin to focus more on financial instruments. So generally, the banks may be able to post uh, fair and um, profit, or but probably a little bit um, 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 low compared to previous years. And their dividend may be affected a little bit because uh, banks may be trying to um, work on their liquidity and also um, to try to um, re um, reinvest their, their returns into the company. But we should still see um, fair, fair dividend at the end of the year. So generally, the banking sector should, should be able to manage the situation from what we've seen so far. Well, we'll wait and see if that happens. Now, COVID-19 has been the elephant in the room, and now we've seen vaccines. You know, but Do we say that this could be an antidote for economic recovery in 2021? Okay. Uh, yes, yes. The, the, so when things like this begin to happen, when we see uh, even in, in, in other parts of the, country, of the world, but the Nigerian capital market, we, like I said, we are responding more to liquidity. So yes, it would be a better, um, a, like an opening up to, to the economy. We could see even currently a lot of people are still not um, open to, um, to normal business activities. So that should help businesses to you know, bolster their activities and for a lot of things to go back to normal in the economy. A lot of um, sectors are affected. So even though a few sectors were able to perform very well, but um, a couple of sectors are still down because of um, the pandemic. So a, a vaccine is, is, a, is, is, is a good news for the, for, the, for the economy and for the capital market as well. So I believe it should, it should, be, um, it should, it should, it should show good things. However, because of, um, it may take a while, so it's not an um, overnight turnaround, you know, to take a while before people um, accept this vaccine and accept the, 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 the vaccine and even a cure, you know. So before we see a cure, we've seen a vaccine, before we see a permanent cure to COVID, we may not necessarily see an overnight turnaround to, um, to what we are currently facing in the market. All right, we'd like to thank you, Associated Gifted Analyst Desmond Abbey. Thank you for making it down here this evening to join us on the program. Thank you for having me. All right, now let's just run through some headlines that came during the week. Now, the Nigerian Stock Exchange has released its 2019 sustainability report themed encouraging sustainable businesses promoting inclusive growth. The report is a detailed compilation of the progress and milestones achieved by the NSE during the reporting period in line with its sustainability commitments, which were developed following the launch of its corporate sustainability and responsibility strategy in 2013. Well, some of the highlights of the report include an increase in the green bond listed by over 30 billion naira, the execution of the first cross border green listing of Access Bank's 15 billion naira green bond, subsequent to an MOU signed with the Luxembourg Stock Exchange. Others include the achievement of 342% increase in the number of students impacted through the 2019 Global Money Week and a 265% surge in employee volunteering program, among others. On Wednesday this week, the NSC held its 59th annual general meeting where members voted overwhelmingly to support the listing of the Nigerian Exchange Group PLC on the Nigerian Exchange Limited once the demutualization of the NSC is completed. Other key resolutions unanimously approved at the AGM include audited financial statements of the exchange for the year ended 31st December 2019 and the reports of the National Council and auditors thereon. The follow or following the conversion and re-registration of the exchange as Nigerian Exchange Group PLC, the powers of the National Council of the Exchange will be developed or will be devolved upon the board of directors of the group. The re-election of Mr. Bimbola Ugubanjo as a member of the National Council was also confirmed at that meeting. The resolutions passed at the AGM, which is expected to be its last as a mutual entity, is subject to the receipt of requisite approvals uh, of relevant regulatory authorities following the conversion and re-registration of the Nigerian Exchange Group. The group is authorized to undertake a listing by introduction of its shares on the Nigerian Exchange Limited. And consequently, the NSC will no longer be wholly owned by its dealing and non-dealing members. 
And uh, during the week as well, the Chief Executive Officer of the Nigerian Stock Exchange, Oscar Onyema, spoke about the benefits of privatization of public assets, stressing that previous moves have helped to expand key sectors of the economy. Speaking at a virtual summit on privatization in Nigeria and the outlook for subnational economic development on Tuesday, Mr. Onyema adds that while the federal government plans to revisit the privatization of public assets, there's a need to bring it down to the subnational level in order for states to have a robust economy. Let's listen to him. Privatization of public enterprises carries far more benefits beyond the immediate gain of bridging a revenue gap. It goes a long way in guaranteeing efficient, productive, and profitable entities by adopting a private sector-led model of intervention that benefits the economy at large. Hence, we witnessed the continuous operations and growth of privatized entities, some as far back as the first phase of the National Privatization Program in 1987. We are excited to lay emphasis on the absolutely positive outcomes of the program, which includes success in relieving the government of the burden of financing public enterprises, creating liquidity for the government to pay off debts and finance new expenditures, thus creating liquidity for the government, thus create, uh, raising the level of investments in infrastructure. The market capitalization of the Nigerian Stock Exchange, through which the shares were sold, grew from 8.9 billion naira in 1987, before privatization, to 65.5 billion naira in 1994, after phase one of the privatization program, and 428.9 billion naira as at the end of August 2000. The Nigerian capital market was deepened and broadened by the large body of shareholders created as a result of the privatization policy. On the national level, the National Council on Privatization, chaired by the Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, GCOM, is the apex body charged with the overall responsibility of formulating and approving policies on privatization and commercialization. And that's where we wrap up today's program. Thank you for watching. I am BC Adebayo.